Thank you, uh, Joseph and uh, Alberto. Uh, with the too many, uh, with the numerous drugs that we have now, and uh, uh, this is uh, shown here on this curve, uh, you see there is an explosion of drugs, and it is kind of uh, uh, difficult uh, to make a choice on which treatment to use. Uh, if you look not only at the drug approval, but uh, also at the extent of indication, you see that in 2017, actually 59 new indications were approved. And as of May uh, this year, already 26. So it's not only the new drugs that are approved, it's the extension of indication that should also be considered. But however, if we want to quantify the benefit provided by these new drugs, and uh, we look uh, retrospectively over 11 years for 86 drugs approved, you see that the median gain for all those drugs on overall survival is only 2.5 months, meaning that most of these drugs do not really contribute for the improvement. Some of them, of course, as you can see on the graph, uh, out, are outlayers, but uh, they are not that numerous. So, in addition to that, there is a cost issue and sustainability uh, of this new drug. You see the prices evolution of drugs from 1976 to 2014, uh, $129 uh, as a mean to more than 10,000. And this raises major points because of cancer incidence is increasing. We treat more and more patients with a better outcome since mortality is decreasing, but this as a cost, and most of the countries will no longer be able to face this cost. So what do we have in terms of tools to select for a given drug rather than another one? I have reviewed here four uh, uh, possibilities of scale or indicators, NCCN, the NICE, the ESMO magnitude of clinical benefit scale, and the ASCO uh, framework. So those four are actually similar but different. NCCN <coughs> is working with providers, patients, and others. It, pro it uh, uh, produces guidance for the use. Uh, in <coughs> and uh, it also uh, addresses the affordability of the scale. NICE in, in, in the US also works with public health clinical practice looking at medicine treatment and procedure, and it is also combining the clinical benefit and the cost effectiveness in terms of qualities. The ESMO MCBS, again, is public information, clinical guideline, and clinical practice. Uh, it looks at clinical trials as material to study and differentiate the curative setting and the non-curative settings the cost is not addressed because of heterogeneity in uh, uh, definition of the price of drug in Europe and reimbursement issue, and it's a dynamic uh, scale. The ASCO uh, used its uh, value framework for a sh shared decision between the patient and the treating physician. They look essentially at drugs in clinical trials and have been def defined a net health benefit score, and the cost is also uh, part of the decision, including the cost of the drug and the out-of-pocket expenses, which is not always easy uh, to access. So if we look at uh, the NCCN, which is a very popular scale uh, worldwide, uh, the members of the panel will score based on clinical trial published data, but also on clinical experience in the real world. And this is very subjective. And uh, I guess most of the members of these panels have major conflict of interest. So the evaluation is not really objective. Uh, quality and consistency, uh, of course, uh, is looked at as well as affordability. And then there are blocks. Uh, and uh, there is a visual, uh, a visual uh, table, if you wish, with uh, five columns, efficacy, safety, quality, consistency, and affordability, and they are ranked from one to five, and the more blue you have, uh, the better is the drug. But uh, NCCN does not show clear level of evidence. 
It's kind of a menu, and uh, you pick up what you want. It shows you what's available. NICE uh, in the UK uh, looks uh, at a drug for their uh, uh, promotion and, and guidance in public health, clinical practice, and health uh, technology. Each appraisal takes about 10 to 18 months, so it's a rather slow uh, uh, process with a committee of 20 experts, and they look at clinical benefit, health benefit in terms of quality, cost health public service, and cost effectiveness, and uh, the service impact. The ASCO value framework is a project that started in 2006, 12 years ago, with a little task force. And they finally issued a scale uh, with two versions. The latest have been published in August uh, 2016 for, for adaptation. <clears throat> and uh, they used to uh, score their drug two uh, uh, things, the clinical benefit and the score of toxicity that can be modified with bonus points only in uh, uh, advanced disease. The score range from zero to 130 in metastatic setting, zero to 100 in curative settings, and they have uh, issued more recently, as I said, a version two modifying uh, some details of the calculation. But it is quite a complicated uh, way to evaluate. The forms uh, are quite cumbersome to fill, as you know, and uh, the cost per month, which is shown here, is not always easy uh, to access because there are some discounts. You can go to the internet and get uh, uh, the drug at discount price in pharmacy and so on. Uh, the ESMO similarly has uh, uh, <coughs> established a magnitude of clinical benefit scores in two steps. First, there was a version uh, 1.0 and then version 1.1, which has been uh, published in September uh, last year and which is used now. So the principle for the ESMO MCBS is that cure takes precedence over the deferral of death. So we want, in the curative setting, to look at cure rates. Direct endpoints like uh, overall survival and quality of life are preferred instead of progression-free survival and response rates. And in curative setting, disease-free survival is recognized as a more valid uh, surrogate endpoint than PFS in metastatic uh, disease. The interpretation for the evidence of benefits uh, derived from surrogate and count may be influenced by later line or treatment or the availability at a later step of overall survival. So if we look at uh, the factor that will influence uh, <clears throat> the MCBS, uh, as I said, we focus on overall survival in metastatic disease, cure rate in, in uh, earlier stage, and we rely on the hazard ratio, and uh, we look essentially at the 95% uh, confidence interval lower extremity uh, to assess the, the maximum magnitude of clinical benefit. Of course, when uh, we uh, have only PFS, we look at PFS, even response rate, and there is a factor of prognostication. We don't evaluate the benefit of a drug uh, similarly in, uh, for example, metastatic pancreatic cancer and metastatic colon cancer because the uh, life expectancy is not the same and this has to be considered. Quality of life and toxicity are considered, but as I said before, cost uh, is not uh, looked at. And with that, we have two groups of patients the curative setting, which is basically the adjuvant or neoadjuvant treatment, for which we have three possibilities of score A, B, and C, and only the drug who got an A or a B are considered as potentially useful. In the non-curative setting, we have five possibilities, from one to five, five being the best, and again, we would favor the, the use of drug ranking uh, four or five. And for this, we have prepared several forms that have been published in Annals of Oncology. In curative settings, there is only one form, uh, evaluation form one, with three score A, B, and C. And in the curative setting, uh, we have, in the non-curative setting, sorry, we have uh, uh, four forms, depending, again, on the prognostic of uh, the disease or uh, the endpoint that was chosen, 
and we have added a form 3 for single arm studies recently. So this is a type of form that you would find uh, for patients with uh, non-curative disease. You see this is form 2A for uh, patients treated for which the control arm or standard of treatment uh, provide a, a median overall survival below 12 months. And according to the uh, lower uh, endpoint of the, the lower extremity of the 95% confidence interval, uh, you will go either to grade 4 or to grade 1. And the magnitude in terms of gain as compared to the control arm is also considered as well as the uh, long-term efficacy. And this, with this, you get a score from 1 to 4. And it can be modulated depending on the toxicity and quality of life when it is reported. And this is important because quite often quality of life is not immediately reported, and this would penalize the drug. So it is important when you publish to include the quality of life because you can get a bonus of one if the quality of life is, is improved. And at the end, in uh, the metastatic setting or non-curative setting, you get a score from one to five. If uh, we look at the concordance between ASCO and ESMO, MCBS, and uh, we do a, a kind of bit of work with, in correlation with, with ASCO, you see that the correlation is not that excellent. It's only 0.61. You have a few outliers here. Oh, this is not easy. Uh, very high score on the MCBS, rather low score in the ASCO scale. And you see also that uh, the, the distribution, according to MCBS, is using all the possible score. Rather than with the ASCO scale, the maximum is 87 out of 130 uh, from zero. So it means probably that the ASCO scale, which is quite complicated, has uh, some items that are not really providing f on the accuracy of the testing. So we are working with ASCO in order to improve uh, this uh, correlation. For example, they use a point estimate on the hazard ratio, not the 95 percent confidence interval, and from that point of view, they may miss uh, uh, some benefit. If we look at the cost according to the score, either in the ASCO scale or the ESMO MCBS, you see that all these drugs are expensive, between 10 and $15,000 per month, whatever the magnitude of the clinical benefit. Drugs that score very low and that we would consider almost as useless in terms of practice, one or two on, a, on MCBS or zero to 20 for the ASCO scale, are as expensive as the one who got the highest score. Of course, you have one outlayer here. These are the CAR T cells, but this is not really a drug. But if you look at all the drugs that have been investigated, you see that the, pro the price is not at all uh, correlated with the efficacy. So uh, since this is a GI meeting, and I used to be interested in GI in the past, uh, I have focused on what we have obtained in terms of scores for the drugs uh, that we have evaluated with the MCBS. We evaluate drugs <coughs> as soon as they are approved by EMA, and EMA only because we are mostly uh, working uh, in, in Europe. Uh, but a drug can be evaluated as soon as a published, uh, paper is published, even if the EMA has not approved it yet. So you see that here some drugs get a very high score in the metastatic setting. These are the anti-EGFR antibodies. This is an example of a recent uh, published uh, trial in the JCO combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab in MSI high colorectal cancer, second line, also a high score. It is not approved yet, but it is uh, uh, scorable for us. And if you look also at the better targeting of the patient population, you take, for example, the uh, Folfox panitumumab, the prime trial, initially published on Keras wild type exon 2 only, got to 3. If you restrict the population to the all RAS, the efficacy is better and you get a 4. So it's quite sensitive as a scale. 
But to the opposite, you see that most of the drug we widely use, like bevacizumab, regorafenib, aflibosept, have a very low score. Bevacizumab, in combination with IFL, has a score of three, which is uh, acceptable, I would say. But when it was tested uh, in the European study with Falfox, it went down to two. So not a major contribution to uh, the outcome, uh, but a, a rather expensive drug. And they are all listed here. Aflibercept has a score of one. Yeah. Bevacizumab in second line, a score of two. Ramucirumab, a score of one. So we have obtained more efficient drug, but they are the really targeted one on, on a, a RAS phenotype or MSI. The rest of it, where we don't really have a target, do not show uh, as much of efficacy. This is the same thing, but an, an uh, esophagastric <coughs> uh, disease. <coughs> you also see that uh, the MCBS can look at a strategy of neoadjuvant or perioperative chemotherapy added to surgery. Uh, you see that they score very well. A, trastuzumab in HER2 positive uh, gastric cancer score of five. Paclitaxel ramucirumab in second line versus paclitaxel only a score of two. Ramucirumab versus placebo score of one. So a minor contribution with a, a, a cost to be considered. And this is uh, the last example is for Fierinox. First line, a score of five in metastatic disease despite added toxicity. Gem gemcitabine versus napaclitaxel compared to gemcitabine, a score of two. And gemcitabine, a lotinib versus gemcitabine, a score of one. So drugs that are costly and not really uh, efficient. So now that we have this score, what do we do with it? We incorporate it in, in the guidelines. The new version of the guidelines show the MCBS score for all the trials that have been used to issue a, a recommendation. And uh, <clears throat> now, with this explosion of uh, uh, drug, we have several options available in a similar cl clinical uh, setting. Of course, accessibility is one issue in certain countries. Affordability will soon be an issue in many countries. And the prefer patient preference has to be considered. So it's a good tool also to discuss with the patient and explain why this regimen has been chosen rather than that one. The guidelines, of course, have to be used and can be uh, uh, also uh, scored. The, the score can be incorporated in the guideline when the data are, are uh, available. These scores, especially the MCBS score, are easy to calculate. You can do it yourself. It's, it's unbiased. It, it's reliable. There is no subjective factor. Uh, and uh, it, it's very reproducible. So, uh, just to conclude, uh, the MCBS uh, fulfill the criteria of objectivity, reliability, and reproducibility of, of what we should expect from uh, the scale. It may be uh, adapted in a dynamic fashion. Uh, we don't know yet how we should use it for, for, for agnostic treatment, but we have a form for single arm uh, trial. But it is more generally as a tool to be used in clinical practice, in education for training and young medical oncologists, but also in oncopolicy to prioritize a drug, and it could be used by HTAs uh, for uh, the pricing uh, issue. So with this, I thank you uh, for your attention, and I encourage you to uh, evaluate the drug if you take the forms that is published in Annals of Oncology. Thank you.